All right, what's up, everyone? Today is going to be a little bit more of unconventional episode of Level Up. Um, I have got a good guest on for today's conversation. That's Lucas from Ergenetic Health. Um, I have come across Lucas's page on Instagram, and it is definitely very interesting. And he's definitely someone I would like to get on to cover a topic of a superhuman protocol when it comes to supplementation. Um, Lucas has been putting out some tremendous contest content uh, when it actually comes to supplementation and actually diving into ins and outs of what the supplementation actually does and what certain um, actual vitamins and minerals actually do for you in detail, you know, and I think that's definitely uh, the research that you can see available on Instagram that generally you would only see on PubMed, which is, uh, which is pretty amazing. As you know, most people, um, they're not really going to be bothered uh, about visiting PubMed, so to speak, to do their own research. So, you know, it makes it a lot easier if you can actually, you know, click on your link, subscribe and, um, and you know, get the notifications and actually learn uh, a thing or two about supplementation. So today's episode, like I mentioned, I want to cover Superhuman Protocol. Before we start, Lucas, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, give us a bit of a lowdown of who you are, where you're from, what you do and what you specialize in, please? Sure, man. Well, first of all, I want to say massive thanks for having me on the show, man. I'm very excited to be here and, and um, express what I've learned over the years. Um, as you said before, um, really what my mission is to condense what we see on uh, on PubMed and, and present that in a way that makes sense to people um, and mostly targeting, you know, performance athletes and bodybuilders and um, all sorts of ergogenic aids. So I guess sort of my story started out actually playing professional soccer um, and I was like, dabbling into research and experimenting with various supplements compounds so i worked in my dad's pharmacy um so i had a bit of experience there um and then just sort of fell in love with research man and then just from there just sort of catapulted into the instagram youtube and and now you know um i have a have an opportunity to really express um really novel and underground research which is which is awesome man that's uh, that's pretty interesting to be honest and you know that that's definitely what has caught my interest and caught my eye, to be honest. Um, so, you know, I definitely wanted to get dive into that. So today's topics that I actually want to cover is definitely going to be more specific towards bodybuilders and people like myself that obviously I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a coach, you know, I, I've got several business going off at the moment as well. So, you know, for me, I don't need, I, I need to function and perform well in and outside of the gym. So I feel like, you know, some of the topics that we can cover uh, will be on supplementation, how to actually function the best in and out of the gym. So we've got six topics for today that we're going to cover. First one's nootropics, second, liver health, third, blood sugar insensitivity, four, sleep hacks, which, you know, sleep hacks is something that's, you know, everyone needs in my opinion. Five, natural testosterone optimization, which, you know, especially for natural athletes where quite a large, quite a large client base of mine is actually natural athletes. So this is actually going to be quite handy. Uh, and I have seen you actually do an experiment where you actually, push your natural testosterone levels up to upper limit as well. Um, and that was quite impressive. So I definitely want to learn a little bit about that. And then last but not least, um, the superhuman health stack. Uh, you know, this is definitely going to be the one that myself, I will be very much interest, interested in, you know, to dig into uh, and try and pick your brains up, you know, to become the ultimate alpha male um, of the health. So, you know, this is going to be your mission to cover that for us today. Um, so firstly, Let's jump on to the first the first topic that I want to cover is uh, nootropics, please, bud. Yeah, sure. So I guess with nootropics, um, you know, you'll see various supplements on the market that cover, you know, the very mainstream ingredients. Um, but I think what it's, what's really important is if we take a step back and just delve into the various neurotransmitters. So I think for your listeners, maybe we'll sort of break down, you know, um, each of the, the specific neurotransmitters and maybe what their functions are. So... Starting off with the, probably the most well-researched is acetylcholine. Um, now, this particular neurotransmitter is awesome for um, improving mind-muscle connection. Um, it's useful for like memory and um, concentration and learning. So it's most heavily associated with like um, cognition and, and um, memory performance. So if we look at acetylcholine, there's various supplements we can utilize that act as acetylcholine donors, like precursors, such as like, you know, the classical example of a precursor or, 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 a, or a donor would be pregnenolone to build all the other hormones. You know, it's the mother of all hormones. But with acetylcholine, we have a, we have a range of options. We have um, acetyl-L-carnitine, which is 
um, you know, good for fatty acid oxidation, but then also helps to synthesize acetylcholine. Um, and then we have CDP choline, which is a very well renowned nootropic that um, has a super long half life um, that can also build up one's acetylcholine stores. And then we have one of my favorites, man, which is um, uridine monophosphate, which is quite underutilized. Um, that one there increases phospholipids in the brain. So it actually helps with like making you like really connect the dots when you're, when you're studying content, like helping you to, you know, connect different ideas. So I guess that's like acetylcholine. Um, and then really, man, like we have a range of other ones. We've got GABA, glutamate, norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. And they're all very important. However, um, if we're, what's really important to understand is we want to um, tweak and manipulate these neurotransmitters to suit our needs. Whatever our, whatever our task is for the day, let's say, um, you know, we've got to sit at the desk all day and we're actually doing consulting or whatever, then things that, then compounds and nootropics that nourish acetylcholine and GABA and dopamine is really going to give you that, you know, that, that, that um, alertness, arousal, concentration, um, and things like that. So yeah, I'm happy to, happy to go explore various neurotransmitters if you want to, if you want to delve into them. To be honest, I, I would definitely like the main ones as GABA is definitely with the one that that's been around for years. And to be honest, I mean, GABA is going to be the one that that's most popular and, and widely known by the general public. Uh, Cause GABA is something that I came across when I was like 16 and generally <laughs> It was like people saying, you know, you need to have GABA before bed because, you know, it's going to make you sleep better. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. So mainly, what would you recommend as, you know, the most, I would probably say the most effective, the most effective nootropics that you would utilize yourself if your goal was to function, you know, to the best of your ability. And, you know, you had a lot of work on and, you know, you needed not sort of an extra boost, but you know, you needed to be switched on mentally. So what would your go-to stack be for the nootropic side? Because I feel like, you know, we can talk about and go into all these details, but let's face it. People want to yeah. know, like <laughs> most of the people watching this will be like, right, tell me all about them. Give me a good overview. But they will yeah. want to know, like, what do you recommend? Realistically? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that is where you're going to get the questions and they're going to be like, right. Well, <laughs> if that's what it is, what do I need to do? Yeah. Yeah. No, good point. So with, um, let's say if you wanted to be like sort of on point, really sharp and focused and just sort of like very confident and, um, you want to just get shit done. Um, honestly, like a, a, a trio of, um, the first ingredient or nootropic would be bromantane, which is a, um, it's actually the world's first synthetic adaptogen ever developed. Um, and it's actually used by the Soviet military and cosmonauts to actually withstand, um, you know, severe stress. It basically turns you into a machine. Um, and I'm the just, thing I'm is, gonna, with, I'm just going to order that now from the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I want it now. Um, so bromantane, yeah, basically what it does is it um, it hijacks the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, which converts the tyrosine that we eat in our food into dopamine. That that particular rate limiting enzyme it upregulates. Um, so. Bromantane at a dose between 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams orally, um, you know, five days on, two days off is a really good starting point. Um, and in the research, man, like they even did a complete washout period. They had a like period where they ceased supplementation and a lot of the benefits were still remaining months after withdrawal, which is what we want, right? We want to, we want to take something that's going to actually upgrade our baseline um, over time, you know, like instead of using something that's like significantly depleting, um, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's the biggest issue at the moment is like any supplement you can actually get, you know, it's going to help you temporarily, but then, you know, aftermath isn't really that good. Whether that's yeah. pharmaceutical, what, you know, because even the pharmaceutical game, uh, you know, with, with the prescribed meds that some people unfortunately have to take, you get the same issue there, I think, you know. Yeah, they're, absolutely. They're good whilst they're taking it, and then you know when the when this continue for whatever reason, that is when you see a downward spiral. But with a supplementation, with supplementation like this, where the actual yeah. effects and aftermath is still positive impact, you know, I think that's definitely that's definitely something that that you know people need to know. Oh, for sure. And the thing is, it also the unique thing about this bromantine um, is that not only does it work on boosting dopamine like sustainably, it's actually hijacking 
um, dopamine production, but it's also actually inhibiting the enzyme that breaks down GABA. So it actually increases GABA at the same time by inhibiting GABA transaminase, which is you get the anxiolytic effects, so reducing anxiety, plus you get the antidepressant slash motivation boosting effect. And literally like when I first tried it, man, like I, I remember the day I actually took it before going to the library and do like, the thing is it didn't kick in until like four to six hours after dosing. And that's, I've seen the research. It says that it's half-life. It's, um, it's like 11 hours or so. But the thing is it, it peaked at like four to six, eight, four to six hours after dosing. And I was like, shit, like I just finished studying. I went, went back home and I'm like, fuck, I feel like doing a workout. And I went to the gym, I went to the playground and just absolutely smashed the workout. I'm like, fuck, I feel, I actually feel euphoric. Like I felt, I felt phenomenal. And then the thing is like, it actually led to me um, sleeping like six hours a night, um, like regularly and still feeling good. But then I was like, something not right here. Like it just, it pushed me into overdrive a bit. And then, um, yeah, you just got to be careful with certain stimulants like that. <laughs> Would you advise to really dose it as soon as you wake up in that, in that scenario? So exactly. Try and mitigate the effects of, you know, you still being in overdrive when you're trying to relax and obviously sleep, because we both know that, you know, you can only run for so long and poor sleep before, you know, you see a downward spiral and regardless of what supplementation I actually use. Exactly. Yeah. So I think when I, when I prescribe it for guys, like I just suggest using um, as soon as you wake up, like even the thing is like sometimes less is more with yeah. some of these compounds, like you can run like 20 to 25 MG of bromantan and still get a like really good boost. And it, particularly if you like stack it with some like phenylalanine or some tyrosine or, you know, you get a really good kick. Um, and that's like, Dude, like if people are looking for like a dopamine push, that really does help. Like it, it, it really does. So, um, yeah, that's definitely one of my one of my favorites. And then in terms of like improving memory and cognition, um, one that's actually I don't know if you've heard much about methylene blue. No, uh, methylene blue is like the very first. Um, it's actually the very first synthetic drug ever developed. Wow. Um, and it was actually used to treat like malaria and also um, well, it's now used to clean fish tanks and all that, all sorts of things. Cause it's actually a dye. Wow. It's blue, it's like a blue dye, but you can microdose methylene blue at around like a hundred to 200 micrograms. And it's, it's a stressor on the body. So like when you take something that's micro stressful, the body responds by upregulating the anti-stress, you know, compounds and properties so like it's honestly like methylene blue if you want to improve like um learning speed and just like short-term working memory and just feel like you can find the right word methylene blue at a dose between 100 to 200 micrograms can really just like hit the spot that's insane <laughs> that is insane yeah. that's insane yeah. everyone's gonna be super everyone's gonna be like <laughs> <"Totally> right <laughs> we're getting in we're getting in but you yeah. know what? this is actually really helpful because some of the effects, obviously, of PEDs, they can actually have a negative impact on your memory and obviously learning ability as well. So for me, even for enhanced guys, and you know, naturals or enhanced, it regardless, wh whoever you are, but especially for guys that are obviously using certain PEDs, I think this is priceless to be honest, because you know, this is what potentially could help you uh, mitigate mm. these these kind of side effects that you don't actually want. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I know I know exactly what you're referring to, like with sort of like trend alone and other yeah. heavy hitters yeah oh man yeah, yeah. travel in prep you know especially when calories are low you know yeah so even um like even certain like herbals i'm like i'm i've just mentioned a couple of two synthetics but there's certain herbals that are like very powerful as well man like um you know we've got like a combination of have you heard have you heard of four scolin it's like a you know it's a common fat burner yeah um uh, for skull is quite good. Um, I actually, used it. I actually used it. Yeah, it just sort of upregulates um, cyclic AMP and and thyroid function. Um, that combined with like artichoke extract, um, that that combination is actually really neuroprotective, like really good for like protecting the brain. Um, and even certain B vitamins, man. Like we can, there's there's one particular B vitamin. Um, it's like a B vitamin B vitamin derivative of vitamin B1. Um, called TTFD. Um, I spoke about that on Ben Greenfield's podcast, but basically like this, 
this one here, like it, it has such good bioavailability that it just easily crosses the blood brain barrier, gets into the brain and just saturates in the brain and helps the brain utilize glucose wow. as a, as, as energy. It's like, it's so awesome, man. That, that is literally perfect year round use, especially for yeah. body in a surplus, you know, the <laughs> glucose is going to be that infinite. So, you know, yeah. definitely something that, that we could definitely utilize. But yeah, that, that oh. you know what, that, that's very interesting, you know, with new tropics. I think as far as new tropics go, I feel like, you know, that's probably some golden gems there because, you know, I feel like at the moment on the market, you've got some decent new tropics. I've tried a couple and, you know, I'm not sure how good they are. I think m- more the problem is the dosage. I feel like, you know, they're probably going a little bit shy of the dosage and probably just filling it with caffeine. Um, but, you know, it's definitely a good point there. And I think, you know, if, if anything, unless the nootropics actually have got a decent ingredient profile, you're probably better off getting the actual ingredients separately yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if, yeah. If, if you do have any good sources, we'll probably put them in the uh, link below um, sure. and add, add it to the description where people can actually, you know, get some actual real nootropics. So they're not yeah. actually getting stung and overpaying for sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, you made a good point. I guess like with the dosages and stuff, um, like th- there is no cookie cutter approach, you know, with nootropics. Like it really does come back to individuality. Like, for example, I might respond um, really well to like 250 milligrams of tyrosine, whereas someone of your size and caliber, you know, you you might need like 500 mg's of um, tyrosine. Um, and yeah, I guess like it really comes back to like individual response, like because some guys are really sensitive. Others, like, they need more. Um, and I guess that's, you know, it's sort of the same with, like, gear. Like, certain guys need more gear. Like, and so others are really sensitive. They've got good engine receptor density, things like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, there's just – the whole nootropic space is just – it's it's fun, man. Like, when you, when you experiment and you see things working, like, it's just – it's really fun. Like, really, really fun. Yeah, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm definitely a fan. I, I like a good new tropic. Um, I definitely do. I definitely do, especially on a busy, on a busy work day. You know, it's uh, it's it's a game changer for sure. Um, so I, I'm definitely uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to do some digging in and, uh, and and see what I can do to improve the old uh, cognitive function. Um, Dude, I'll, I'll I'll write I'll write you up a stack after the show. I'll I'll write you up like a like a like a um, focus stack and just yeah play around with it, man. Yes, love it, love it. Right. Yeah. Do you want to do a bit of an overview um, to finish off on the new tropics before going to liver health? Uh, what is do's and don'ts for people that uh-huh. actually do and don't try to avoid? Because, you know, some people might want to, you know, get stuck in, listen to advice, but probably go down the route of what they shouldn't do. So I think a good little overview of what they should and shouldn't do is definitely going to be helpful for listeners to try and, you know, take the right approach and, you know, what not to do from experience as well. I think that's going to be, you know, pretty priceless. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up. So with um, the biggest don't is um, to purchase pre-formulated um, proprietary blended supplements. Like ones that... <laughs> <laughs> the ones that I've just mentioned, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because like, um, you know, we just don't know the dosages for each ingredient and that's going to really determine how we respond to the compound. We need to know like, What's your individual tolerance like to one ingredient? The best thing to do, what people should do, and this is what I encourage, is literally build their own stacks. Make their own. Like I know a lot of your guys are already taking a bunch of things and like why not treat nootropics the same? You know, like order the compounds in, raw materials, get a get a scale. Like I've got a scale, micro milligram scale. And what you should do is become familiar with how each compound affects you. Instead of just going on a formula that has like 10 ingredients, how do you know which one you're responding well to? So I think that's like a really critical point. Um, yeah, getting people to, um, you know, become aware of how they respond to each compound and at different dosages as well and also at different times of the day. Um, so certain like memory boosters, you know, some of them work better when they dose before bed. Others work better if you're doing it 30 minutes before your, your task, you know? Yeah. Is that like GABA's generally advice to dose before bed? Yeah, yeah. So GABA, taurine, theanine, yeah. like they're all awesome before bed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they actually improve, well, they're actually supposed to help with sleep too. So I think you get best of both worlds from that perspective. Yeah, and by the way, the other benefit of um, GABA 
that they've just discovered is that it can help to regenerate the um, some of the beta cells on the pancreas to help with insulin release. So there's like anti-diabetic effects of pure GABA now. <laughs> I've just ordered some GABA now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, this if anyone's got a supplement company and they're watching this they, this should be like ringing alarm bells you know and they should be like right this is a, a good business opportunity really because yeah. you know i don't feel like obviously my sponsor trend by jp nutrition they are unreal unreal when it comes to supplementation but i feel like you know they're still building the brand up they're still building um the, the kind of the array of supplementation up um, and, you know, they're definitely leading the industry with a quality as well. So, you know, I feel like that's something I could uh, speak to Jordan about because he really does, you know, actually pride himself on the quality of the, of the nutrition uh, that actually produces, you know. So I feel like that could definitely be of benefit because the, the, the pre-workout supplements he actually has is the dialing. That's actually got a good nootropic blend. And, you know, I've tried so many different nootropics. And that's probably the only one that can actually touch me and actually do something. And the other ones, I have them, and it just feels like I've had a coffee. So, you know, you, you know when it's a good proprietary blend, when you yeah. just feel like you've had a small coffee and, you know, yeah. focus isn't truly there. Whereas when I actually have dial in, you know, I'm so zoned in, you know, the focus is, is really, really there. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely a fan of that, to be honest. But you've made some real good points there when you actually are dosing, the nootropics for a specific purpose, you know, yep. it's probably the best way of going around is actually getting their own units separately. Um, I think that's definitely a good call, uh, especially yep. if you just, it, for, for my purpose, of like, so what I'm actually going to do is just mainly improve my function and, and my performance with, with work uh, and obviously mm. learning ability as well. So I feel like, you know, to do that, you probably need to play around with specific ingredients as well. Um, yeah. not, not just not just an all-in-one. And, you know, with the dial-in as well, when I have that, I kind of, I can't sit in one place, mate. I need to like, you know, I need to go. So it's perfect yeah. before training. For me, it's perfect before training. Some people that, you know, they can use it before work. But for me, um, when I have it, you know, I can't sit in one place. I need to go. So. Yeah. You, you, you know, you found a good stack when you just completely lose track of time and you're just so zoned in. Yeah. Like you're just in a flow state, man. Like time just goes by and you're just fucking like killing it, just smashing it. Yeah, the only time I can I can do that with no nootropics is actually in prep. Oh, uh, yeah. When, in my, when I'm in prep, for some reason, and I don't know why, but my, my cognitive function is so much better. It, Would you be in ketosis? Are you in ketosis or? No. Oh, really? Literally, my carbs are probably around 400 grams. And like my, my literal brain function is perfect. Whereas at the wow. moment, at the moment, they're probably upwards of 800 gram. So... As you can imagine, I'm like, you know, it's wow. def definitely a lot harder in off season to, you know, keep on top of, you know, your functions. Um, but then it is in prep. For me, in prep, I'm so much more productive. And for wow. some reason, like, my focus is like, like laser from the morning I wake up till bedtime. Um, that's probably down to just less food, I think. And mm. I feel like my body just functions on, you know, when I'm in a deficit rather than a surplus. That's interesting, man. Yeah. Even oh, it might be the tremolo. You never know. <laughs> might, yeah. <laughs> might, might be the tremolo helping. <laughs> right. I think this is definitely going to be a good one that a lot of people are going to benefit from, especially in this day and age. Uh, I don't feel like many people pay attention to it enough. Is definitely liver health um, and yeah. liver function, um, especially when your liver is under a lot of stress. You know, but we all know appetite can go and many other things will actually get affected. Um, but definitely, I would like to dive into what can actually happen and what downsides you actually have if your liver is under too much stress. How can you fix it and how can you actually optimize your liver function? Because let's face it, I feel like, you know, a lot of people will definitely be interested in, you know, what can I do to make my liver function better? And, you know, mm. make it, you know, probably as, as good as we can year round, especially yeah. for certain individuals. Um, that do like to push the boundaries with supplementation wise as well. So, you know, I feel like a little bit of an overview on, on how to protect ourselves is definitely going to be a good one. For sure. All right. So let's sort of get stuck into like um, a class of drugs or compounds known as hepatotropo restoratives, which means that they have like a regenerative capacity on the liver. Um, the classic one that everyone will know in the bodybuilding community is milk thistle. Like, all, you know, hopefully 
you know, guys will know Milk Thistle. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of Milk Thistle based on the fact that it might raise prolactin slightly. Um, and, you know, we don't want to, as bodybuilders, like the last thing we want, right? Yeah. Um, so instead of using Milk Thistle, I like to use um, something really novel. And this is... Um, this is like, oh, this will be the second time I've mentioned it ever. I haven't even done a post on this yet. And so you're hearing it like today. So get your pencil papers out. <laughs> so this one here is called, um, everyone's heard of N-acetylcysteine, N-A-C, like NAC, which is awesome. But there's a new variation of NAC called um, NACET, N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester. It's like a derivative of NAC. It's supremely more bioavailable has better um, you know, penetration into cell membranes and would likely boost glutathione, the, 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 the liver's master antioxidant, much more than just regular NAC. So um, N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester, like, dude, that's, I think that's an up-and-coming one that literally, I would say like probably like 0.1% of the population has even heard of it. Um, but just keep a lookout because it's, it's going be, to be big. I think it's going to be big in the next year or so. Um, so, yeah, so NAC ET um, at a dose between like 50 to 100 milligrams um, combined with like some a good quality liposomal vitamin C, um, which has awesome, you know, bioavailability and vitamin C helps to jack up, um, you know, glutathione production. So does selenium as well. Um, they can throw in some selenium. So you've got like a nice trio there. You've got um, NACT plus liposomal vitamin C up to a thousand milligrams per day, and then um, some selenium. Not too much selenium because that can be very quickly um, toxic, but you know a very low dose of selenium will work really well. And then if guys are running super heavy gear, um, like the heavy, heavy, hit, heavy hitters, um, then we'll need to look into um, liposomal glutathione. Um, and also calcium deglucurate as well. Um, calcium deglucurate, I found out actually um, I had elevated beta glucuronidase, which means it actually recircul recirculates um, estrogen. And so we need to actually clear out estrogen. I know estrogen is important. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of discussion. Jay Campbell's talking about, <laughs> yeah, with, with the estrogen side of things, how... Um, Do you know what? It is important, yeah. but let's face it, mate. Too much estrogen, you know, too much of anything is not going to be beneficial, especially yeah. for physique goals. You know, I'm a little bit tired of these guys saying, you know, estrogen is good and more estrogen the better. If you are trying to get lean, if your yeah. estrogen is sky high, whether you're a male or a female, you are going to have a hard time dropping body fat. Yeah. If you are looking to get in contest shape and your estrogen is above a certain level, you are going to have a hard time dropping, dropping body fat and getting stage lean. And, you know, mm. that is inevitable. You know, mm. so when these guys preach about the estrogen, you know, they need to have a look at the circumstances and they need to really talk about in which scenario it is ideal. Because, you know, all we see is like a blank overview saying you shouldn't suppress estrogen, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. But they don't really dive in to say, well, why and at what point you shouldn't do it. You know, it's always a blanket statement as if to say, you know, or a lot of guys are like, you should never use eyes. Well, in some instances, it's you're probably better off using an eye than, you know, allowing your estrogen to stay at a certain range without it coming down when easily you could get it sorted within a week and then you're back in a perfect place and you're back yeah. in a productive place. You know, so, yeah. um, you know, please, please, please. Stop thinking that, you know, having estrogen at a sky high range is healthy because that is not healthy either. I uh, believe, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think, I think Victor Black has sort of discussed, I don't know if you've seen much of his content, Victor Black, um, also like Jay Campbell and a few other guys, they discussed that. Um, but you're right. Absolutely. And thing is with estrogen, when it's too high, it's going to dampen um, metabolism and it's going to just, it basically, from a body composition perspective, yes, it's going to um, carry extra water weight and things like that. But yeah, for sure. I think yeah, guys yeah, get carried away. Extra, extra water weight as well. You know, if it's in super excess, you know, that's going to be a massive contributing factor to the blood pressure as well. If, yeah. especially if you are using anabolics and if your body fat's over a certain range, you know, mm. so, 
it's very much, you know, you need to really talk about the context because, you know, mm. as a coach, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of athletes with different really responses to certain things. And believe me now, it's not as easy as to say, you know, that's the way to go because, you know, what it might be with a certain individual, you've got another guy that's, you know, maybe working the same, but trust me, his response is going to be a polar opposite, you know? Mm. So you need to really, you know, be careful what people say and don't give out the blanket statements like, like people generally do. I, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of that to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so back on like the liver function, like I guess, um, you know, liposome, glutathione, the vitamin C um, and also the artichoke extract that I mentioned before. Um, and actually one of my favorite compounds, you're probably familiar with this one is Tutka. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm a huge fan of Tutka. Uh, I use that. Um, the other benefit of Tutka is it may actually increase um, thyroid function as well because we know liver is really important to convert T4 to T3. It actually, majority of it happens in the liver. Um, so Tutka, I'm using, like personally, I'm using Tutka like 500 milligrams a day just as like, just just staple. I've combined with like three grams of taurine every day as well. Yeah. Um, do you want to outline this as well? Because many of natural athletes don't actually believe they need it. <laughs> okay. So do, you want yeah. to, do you want to just point that one out? Because yeah. you know, I feel like there's a lot of benefits because I actually include it in my natural athlete supplement protocols. And, you know, some of them have actually asked me, well, why do I need it? I'm natural. So do you want to just explain that a little bit? Because this is going to be a good one that I can actually use with Dev and be like, right, listen to this. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why Tutka is also beneficial in natties is because um, it promotes the release and production of bile. Now, bile, it is a bile acid itself, but it actually stimulates bile production. Now, um, doesn't matter what sort of diet you're on, you need some degree of bile support because it's going to help to break down, utilize um, the fats and even help with um, fat-soluble vitamin absorption, which is critical for naturals, you know, Vitamin A, D, E, K, all of them are critical for testosterone production. You know, you've seen studies where they give uh, 15,000 IU of vitamin D. That boosts testosterone by like 10, 10 to 15%. Um, so that's why I think like Tutka in the mix is a very reliable way to keep liver enzymes in check. Despite the fact that they're not on gear, they're still stressing the body with training and, you know, like it's still a stressful state to be training six, seven days a week. Even my liver enzymes run high. Yep. Um, that's why you, and I'm not even on, you know, I'm natty. So like, you know, Tutka is still beneficial, you know? Yeah. Um, and even, even at high doses, by the way, I think between a thousand milligrams to 1500 milligrams, it's actually been shown to improve uh, insulin sensitivity in the liver, which is like, like who doesn't want to be more insulin sensitive? <laughs> That's the goal year round. That's the goal year round, especially yeah. deep into the off season. You know, <laughs> that is where I feel like, you know, a, a lot of the progress actually stops when, you know, you become resistant to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we could, we could even dive deeper into like the insulin optimizer, insulin sensitivity optimization. If you want, like if you want to. Well, that is going to be the next topic actually. Great. That, yeah. that's topic number three so that, that that is where we're going to go um with the with the actual liver enzymes as well i definitely think it's worth mentioning when you actually get your blood results they can be a little bit higher even if you don't use supplementation just like you've mentioned um do you want to outline the reasons why that is because yeah. i've had a couple of clients previously that are natural had the blood work done and there was like why is my liver enzyme so high yeah 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 so um one key point to note is even if you trained 24 to 36 hours before the blood test, um, weight training or some degree of like stressful exercise, you're going to see a rise in liver enzymes and that's normal. It's a transient rise. Um, so really when you get that blood test result, it's almost like a false, a false positive, you know, um, which will need to be retested. And the thing is like, it's not really a big deal if your AST and ALT are both high. What's also important is GGT and um, protein and uh, albumin. Like it's the combination, it's the it's the full symphony of um, uh, tests, not just the two that we focus on. ALP is also important. 
ALP can also be uh, indicative of zinc deficiency if it's less than 70. Um, so people, there's like little hacks you can do to like look into the blood test and sort of see what's going on. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's a good- actually covered zinc in detail in, in your, one of your posts recently. Or so yeah, that, that's actually quite handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess like that's obviously really important. There's there is no harmful effects of a high protein diet. I mean, um, a natty even if a natty's having like four to five grams, yeah. four grams per kilogram of body weight, it's still not going to cause any damage, you know. So. That's definitely that's definitely an interesting one. You know, I think definitely following on with that, uh, blood sugar and insulin sensitivity. I think that definitely has a, a good carryover from liver function. Uh, yeah. This because uh, again, like we said, when when liver's not in a good place, you know, we both know that, you know, we're not going to get a good response in anything really. Uh, but your blood sugar and sensitivity in particular definitely is going to get affected. So let's dive into optimizing blood sugar. Um, and, and ways that we can actually stay sensitive year round because, you know, this is definitely where a lot of bodybuilders actually don't pay enough attention to. And this is where they actually, you know, the progress, in my opinion, stops. When you become insulin resistant, you know, you need to get back in a place where you are sensitive again, because, you know, if you are just throwing carbohydrates in on top and you become resistant, they aren't doing anything. Yeah. And this is where, you know, the bodybuilders in off season, they wonder why, you know, all of a sudden they stop getting pumps, they feel flat, they're eating all this food. And what is the next thing to actually do? They start eating more food and adding junk food on top because, you know, yeah. they're feeling flat. And, you know, I think that's probably the, the opposite of what you actually need to do. Um, so I'll let Lucas actually dive into uh, what you can actually do to improve your blood sugar and, you know, keep it at a nice level where it's going to allow you to be productive year round during the off season. Yeah, so I'd imagine most of your listeners have probably heard of um, berberine um, as like a insulin sensitizing herb. I'm gonna I'm gonna share something that's like one step beyond that. Um, everyone knows berberine, you know, 500 to 1,000 milligrams per day can help with insulin sensitivity, lower cholesterol, improve a variety of health parameters. But the key point here is the bioavailability is not amazing. Um, so. To counteract this, there's a new form of berberine called dihydroberberine. I did a video on my YouTube channel talking about dihydroberberine. Um, that there, man, like has been shown to have five times the absorption capacity in the gut and penetrate um, cell membranes much more effectively than regular berberine. So you can drop the dose, drop it down to like 50 to 100 milligrams of DHB, dihydro, not dihydroboltanone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to retract that statement. Otherwise, everyone's going to be using DHB thinking they're going to, you know, they're going to get insulin sensitive. All of a sudden, all the natty audience aren't natty anymore. <laughs> yeah, with the with the dihydroberberine, um, the best thing about it is that you can drop the dose and then not get the, um, the, the GI discomfort that you get with like berberine. Um, so, you know, 50 to 100 milligrams of, dihydroberberine with 30 minutes before your highest carb meal of the day. I don't know, whatever, whichever one it's going to be, but not after a workout. You wouldn't want to use, you don't really need that post-workout, right? I think that's, that's a good point to make because I, I never actually include it in my client's diets around the workout perimeter. Um, generally, I, I include it in meal one because generally, you know, that is where it's going to be, you know, one of the biggest calorie dense meals that isn't around the workout perimeter. Um, so yep. generally it's going to sit around meal one. Um, if I do tend to utilize it, um, you know, some people like to utilize it with every meal, you know, I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, for me, one to two times a day is definitely more than enough. Um, yeah. anything, uh, but generally yeah. I, I like to just use it, you know, in the morning with meal one. Yeah. Same here, man. And even if, um, even if I want to like, if I'm carb backloading, I might have it in the evening with the super high carb meal. Or even on the weekends, man, when I'm gone on a date or whatever, like going out to binge, like of course I'll have some dihydrobeverine or um, even metformin sometimes I'll use every now and then. Um, but yeah, I guess like rotating that DHB with like, there's a particular type of cinnamon that I like to use. I mean, we can use like the the spice for sure, but there's like a particular type of cinnamon, um, scintillin, um, that's got some research, you know, it's, extracting like the specific types of polymers out of cinnamon that help with like um, insulin release, things like that. 
And then that B vitamin that I mentioned before, that TTFD, that B1, yeah. dude, like mega dosing that. I had a um, glucose monitor, like a CGM yeah. in the back of my arm. And like when I had some of that, like blood sugar dropped. I actually went hypoglycemic multiple times. Wow. So that's another really cool thing to play around with as well. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty insane, man. Yeah. Even taurine as well, like taurine. I mean, I use 3,000 milligrams a day. That was actually part of my um, testosterone optimization stack. Yeah. Um, but taurine like also increases liver liver glycogen. Um, that's important. You know, like guys that are, if they're, you know, doing fasting or whatever, they need the, that's when they need the liver glycogen full because yeah. that's when we're going to start tapping into. Um, so hopefully like, yeah. And even some of the B vitamins as well, there's... um crazy research on um biotin which is used for like hair skin and nails but like if you use like super high dose um biotin it can even restore uh, uh, uh insulin sensitivity uh, sorry it can lower blood sugar levels even in type 1 diabetics which is insane wow yeah wow. and that's normally women use that. <laughs> normally women yeah. yeah it's uh, definitely unconventional use but yeah yeah that's that's pretty crazy well, I'm all for, I'm all for off-label use, man. That's that's what I love discussing. <laughs> what is your stance on metformin? Um, time and place, and also, hmm, there's there are some arguments around the whole AMK and suppressing mTOR things like that. But I've seen that many dudes like still able to build a lot of muscle whilst running metformin. Like, yeah, I mean, like. And the only other negative, there's, there are negatives. Like it will lower B12. It yeah. will, um, it could drive up SHBG. Um, and it can also lower free testosterone. Um, and it might have some other GI side effects. But really like if we're on an anti-aging stack, like if we're, just, if we're talking anti-aging, you can't beat metformin. Like you just can't. Um, if you're over the age of 60, or, you know, like you're, you're trying to design a longevity stack, metformin has to be in there. For an assisted athlete, would you say it's definitely a good addition? Because definitely of recent, I feel like anyone that's pushing the boundaries um, and anyone that is, you know, is an assisted athlete to a degree, I feel like, you know, like you said, circumstantial, yes. But I feel like, you know, the guys that are in it more for the long run that, you know, are going to be using anabolics, probably for the next 10, 15 years and be competitive for the next 10, 10, 15 years, would you say that is a good addition? I think so. I mean, um, like, yeah, I think in terms of um, beyond the scope of blood sugar, we're also getting like an increase. I keep looking to the left because I can just keep looking at the box of metformin. <laughs> but beyond, <laughs> my dad's a pharmacist, man. Like I get access to whatever. Um but beyond the scope of like the blood sugar control, you're getting um, an increase in this particular type of bacteria in the gut, Achamansia. And Achamansia, like by itself, I think we're going to start to see people actually taking Achamansia as like a probiotic soon wow. because Achamansia has so many sick benefits, man. Like if you look up the benefits of Achamansia, um, you see tons of cool research and the thing wow. is that metformin drop increases that bacterial growth. So um, yeah, I mean, I look at metformin as just like a, as, as a fasting mimicking drug. That's all it is. Yeah. Like just mimics fasting. That's all it does. To be honest, that that's ideal for bodybuilders when the food is high, because let's face it the, the, for me, I don't particularly use it just for blood sugar. I use it for the other benefits. And for me, for a bodybuilder that's, you know, Let's face it, you know, we're always going to be pushing food for one unless, you know, it's 10 weeks out because to the extremity that, that, that myself and some of my guys have to take it, you know, we are pushing food hard year round up until probably like 10, eight weeks out where it actually wow. gets to a lower point. And even then, mate, we're sitting at like 400 grams of carbs, 300 grams of carbs. So as you can imagine, that's probably your daily intake. Um, <laughs> So, you know, that puts things into, into context for you of, you know, yeah. how, how things roll from that perspective. Um, mm. But, you know, for me, it, it's definitely something that, that, that is very, very useful. More of a, as, a, as almost like a, a safety card, you know, for, for long-term use. 
um, when it does come to, to the use of anabolics, in my opinion. Um, but many people just utilize it, you know, for the for the insensitivity sides. But for me, I feel like, you know, there's far bigger benefits to it than, than just that. Um, just yeah. like the outline, mate, to be honest. But yeah. the way I want to work with this is we're going to do it in two parts. Part one, we've covered nootropics, liver health, blood sugar, insensitivity. Uh, before we wrap up, I'll let you um, do a bit more of an overview on insensitivity as well. Um, the way I want to do this, we're going to do it in two parts. This is going to be part one of the superhuman stack. And then part two, we're going to do the week after. Um, also, we're definitely going to have to get something going monthly. Uh, maybe a monthly call, how to maybe, yeah, you know, optimize your health supplementation and how to stay superhuman, um, you know, as a, as a rule for more assisted and natural athletes. I feel like that's definitely something that's missing uh, right now for people. So it's definitely something that, that we could dive into and, you know, provide for the public. Um, so that's definitely going to be something that, that, you know, we'll be looking at doing. Um, so definitely give us a, a little bit more of an overview um, on your actual tips and your ways and methods to, to keep the blood sugar and insensitivity in check. Yeah. So the most, um, the most obvious one is um, like 10 to 15 minute walks after your meals. Stan Efferding, you probably heard him talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, I say this so many times about the 10 minute walk. It's a free 10 minute oh, walk today. That, that is one of my favorites. And you know what? I still use that now. Especially, it's, uh, especially in off season, it's a godsend. Dude, it just works. And the thing is like, I, I was, you know, once I heard Stan talk about that, I was like, I'm going to buy myself a walking treadmill desk. And I bought myself one at the start of lockdown. And I'll tell you what, man, like in terms of, um, I mean, my own physique changes, like I hadn't changed my diet at all. Like I was eating, well, I don't eat super clean. Like I don't eat super clean all the time, but I was just, you know, after 12 weeks or so of doing quite a lot, I was doing like 15, I was doing like 20,000 steps a day. Wow. Um, Cause I was taking calls and consulting and designing content. 20,000 steps a day for like 12 weeks, looked at my like core, my abdom like abdominal area and just stripped, completely just stripped the body fat. Um, and that was like, everyone's like, oh, what are you, you know, what are you doing? Like, what, what stops you on and things like that? I'm like, I'm walking after every meal. My insulin's not even budging. No wonder I feel like I'm lean, you know, so. That is awesome. I think uh, this is where, you know, I feel like a lot of people, especially uh, in England, uh, according to them, tracking steps don't work. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I kid you not, some people are still in the, under assumption that, you know, tracking steps, you know, you shouldn't do it. It doesn't work. Yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, to differ. You know, you can't really yeah. uh, cheat a calorie deficit, you know. <laughs> exactly. Unless you walk into McDonald's and you can't do that steps, you know. Yeah. The thing is, man, I'm I'm on the treadmill, but I'm I'm going nowhere in life. <laughs> Literally, I'm not. <laughs> yes. Love it, love it, love it. So, uh, as far as supplementation, uh, aside from berberine and obviously certain use of metformin, is there anything else that you would recommend uh, recommend to to actually utilize uh, from supplementation array? Um, obviously, you did mention a couple of things. Obviously, with the liver health, that does actually help. So, you yeah, know, definitely a good subject to follow on with. Uh, but is there any other gems that, that some people may overlook? Um, or is there anything that in particular that could actually cause insulin resistance, particularly in bodybuilders? Oh, well, the, the classic the classic would be MK677. Um, you know, that, that that's well known to any... I mean, the majority of the growth hormone secretagogues are going to impair insulin sensitivity. Um, but... In general, I would say, you know, combined with the, the walking, <clears throat> even um, I'm convinced that like twice a week sauna usage yeah. will have like a positive effect on cardiovascular function is the obvious one, but um, I'm convinced that it will have some degree of positive effect on um, insulin sensitivity. I haven't, I probably need to, you know, d dive deeper into the research in terms of like um, d uh, frequency. I've got myself an infrared I got a full spectrum, you know, um, infrared sauna here, um, and I, I'll use that, you know, sixty degrees, twenty five minutes, maybe once or t once a week or so. Um, the only the only caution with um, sauna use, I'm sort of going off on a tangent, is um, <clears throat> it can spike prolactin, 
And I've definitely like, it's a potent release of prolactin. Um, and, and the thing is heat in general, um, it's not good for male fertility. Like heat destroys sperm. That's just a fact. Um, so I always bring an ice pack and ice my balls during the sauna. And that's actually, <laughs> dude, the thing is like when, when it comes to talking about testosterone optimization and I got my, my levels just shy of a thousand nanograms per deciliter naturally, like using the ice pack, I ice my balls. I did a whole video on YouTube talking about the benefits of icing their balls. And I, I started a whole Facebook group. There's like thousands of dudes. <laughs> Um, it just works. It, it, and I, I've, I've seen couples like after like I, 10 I, weeks. Like, I see each other's balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like for fertility, it's, it's awesome. That is awesome. That's definitely a good takeaway point. I've been having uh, chirotherapy baths. So, you know, that, that definitely equates to, you know, a sharp ice in the balls, to be honest. Yeah. 196, minus 196 degrees for three minutes each time. That's, yeah. that's definitely a good experience to be honest mm. right bud let's do a little bit of a wrap up um, definitely going to that's going to be part one of the superhuman stack um, how to optimise you know your actual health supplementation um, so give us a little bit of an overview um, of what we've got planned next obviously we're going to be touching on uh, sleep hacks natural testosterone optimization. And then superhuman style stack next. So, what can we expect from the ne next episode? Just to get the the listeners, uh, you know, a little bit excited for the next one. Yeah, from the um from the natty like the natty testosterone optimization. Um, we'll dive deeper into like specific um traditional Chinese herbs that have, <clears throat> you know, there's there's a lot of commonly known ones like tribulus, but we'll, we'll, we'll explore some other um, novel compounds that I've um that I explored in the testosterone course that I built. Um, and then also from the, um, the next, the next subject on, um, uh, the superhuman stack. Is that, is that the superhuman health stack? Superhuman health stack will dive deeper into like other longevity, um, aids, like things that are going to improve health span. Um, and yeah, just improve overall energy and vitality. Cause like, there's so many useful compounds that um, have a very low toxicity threshold that can just improve someone's baseline by like 20, 30%. Um, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll dive deeper into them. So it's going to be awesome, man. That is awesome. So guys, thank you for listening <clears throat> until next time. And then uh, you can all find out how to be superhuman for yourself. Thank you guys. Awesome, and take care.